so far. So we have our curve over the rationals, a nice curve of genus G at least two. We're gonna assume that the rank of its Jacobian is G. The rank of neuron severi is at least one. Um, we're gonna assume that log gives us an isomorphism here. This is over 2P. And uh, let's see, we're gonna work with P a good prime. And we're gonna assume that X has everywhere potentially good reduction. All right, so the first thing that we'd like to do is extend a diagram that we had yesterday. So. So we had our rational points mapping into our QP points on the curve. And then we had, and we also saw this in Kim's lecture. So unipotent Coomer map. And then we can localize. And we also have this local unipotent Coomer map. And we like to map here into our um, space of mixed extensions um, of chaotic global um, star representations with three graded pieces, QPV, QP1, uh, crystalline at P. And we'll do this by twisting. And we also, so we have our local objects here. Then we have our um, filtered fee modules here. And we saw, again, also in Mignon's lecture, uh, the space uterum um, quotiented out by fill zero. Um, so this is a quotient of Deline's um, Durham pi one. And this map here is cut out by iterated intervals. And we have also uh, this height pairing of Nekobar that we've been studying here on this space. So we're gonna get something in QP at the end of the day. And we also have a local height, HP. All right, so uh, let me label this too. So this P. So we need to construct tau and tau p via twisting on the Lie algebra side. Uh, and if we do that, then by our assumptions, we have the following. So we start off with the neck of our height, which we said was a pairing on block cut of silver groups. Um, but then if we localize and apply Poincaré duality, we find ourselves here. And then by the block cut log, Now, we're in territory that we've seen before, so we're looking at bilinear forms. <laughs> and so these are the spaces of linear functionals um, integrating the usual regular one forms. So, you need view neck of our height. As a bilinear pairing. And maybe I'll just 
write down what I said here. So this is localization and Poincaré duality. And this is from the block catalog. All right. So now what we want to do is associate to every rational point um, a certain extension, a certain mixed extension. So x is going to go to tau of j of x. And we'll do this. Similarly on the local side, so for x in xqp. So we're assigning mixed extensions with these three graded pieces to each q point and each qp point. So this map, this height map, now extends to p at x as well. And finally, we'll fix a basis we'll call psi of the space. And we'll use this to rewrite our height in terms of this basis using a set of known rational points, either if we have enough independent rational points in the sense that you know, we can generate uh, the right dimensions here, um, or possibly through height pairings back on the Jacobian. So the theorem, this is joint work with Nishan Dabra, and this is a quadratic Chevrotet for rational points in our setup. Is that the function rho that sends x to the local height of this representation minus the global height, this vanishes on xqpu, which was this thing that was very close to xqp2, and has finitely many zeros. And what we like to do is make this explicit and compute the set XQPU. All right. So to make this explicit, we need to do two things. So first, write the global height H in terms of our basis. for the space of bilinear forms. And two, compute the local height of one of these uh, mixed extensions. And this we'll do using the filtered <laughs> fee module structure of decrease of a of x. So a lemma is that there exists a connection az with Hodge filtration. And for Beanie structure, such that if I pull back um, for any piatic point x on the curve, this is isomorphic 
to decrease of AX. And this is an isomorphism of filtered phi modules. This follows from work of Olson, so Olson's comparison theorem. All right, so a few words about curly AZ. This is a unipotent isocrystal, and it's a quotient of a certain universal two-step unipotent connection, A2 Jerom. So it suffices to compute a Hodge filtration and Frobenius structure. So let me say a few words about that. So the first part on the Hodge side, this is defined by the Hodge filtration on graded pieces and its global nature. And so there's some work of Hadian uh, characterizing the universal properties it satisfies. Um, and first, you know, we do this on some affine um, and extend. And on the Frobenius side, so this is via Frobenius on the rigid picture and a comparison theorem of Chiarolotto and Lestum. So there's an initial condition, which is an action on a unit vector. And this gives so it be the action um, on the unit vector. And this gives us a piatic differential equation that we solve using Tautman's algorithm. And the details of each of these two pieces is in sections 5.2 and 5.3 in the notes. So what I thought I'd spend some time now doing is to talk about um, when we can apply quadratic Chabotis. So we started off by saying, well, we have a number of assumptions that we've kind of collected along the way here. So we have a nice curve, genus at least two. We're going to assume that its rank, uh, the Jacobian is G, the rank of neurons is greater than one, um, that we have this isomorphism. Um, that P is a good prime, and we have every potential good reduction. So you might be wondering, well, do we have curves for which um, we can do this? Are there interesting classes of curves for which you would like to do this? And the answer is yes. Uh, there are a number of curves. Um, maybe um, kind of related to the setup, so um, in some earlier work, so this is examples of quadratic Shavuti. So this is a problem. This is much earlier work, so a problem of Diophantus. So this is problem 17, book 6 of the Arabic manuscript of the Arithmetica. So 
Diophantus asks if you can find three squares, which when added, give a square and such that the first one is the square root, he called it the side of the second, and the second is the square root of the third. All right, so in other words, can we find positive rational x and y such that this equation is satisfied. So y squared equals x to the eighth plus x to the fourth plus x squared. And Diophantus found the solution one half and nine sixteenths. And so from Diophantus's point of view, he was happy he was done. Uh, but of course, we'd like to know, are there any others? So we want to work with a smooth curve. So we'll remove singularity at zero, zero. And so we want to determine the set of rational points for the following hyperelliptic curve. And here are some things about this hyperelliptic curve. So it's Jacobian, has rank two. And you can kind of see, well, so this is something squared, and this is also something squared. So we admit a degree two map down to an elliptic curve. The Jacobian is isogenous to a product of two <coughs> elliptic curves. It's the rank of neuron severity here. It's two. And Weatherall, in his thesis, he determined the set of rational points via covers, so covering collections, and classical Shabot T. Coleman. So very briefly, um, he constructed two covers of genus five and then quotient it out to get two covers of genus three that turned out to be hyperelliptic. And one had rank zero and one had rank one. So he was in business. He applied um, Shabot T. Coleman and determined the set of rational points on those genus three curves and then got the rational points on his curve. Uh, so more recently, Francesca Bianchi gave a quadratic Chabot solution to Diophantus' question. Using uh, an interpretation of piatic heights on elliptic curves, and in particular using the piatic sigma function instead of double Coleman integrals. And she showed uh, the set of rational points as what are all found is precisely the set. All right, so this uh, is related to some work uh, that Nathan and I did, which is that we can apply quadratic Chabot to bioelliptic genus two curves x over k, um, where k is q, or quadratic imaginary <laughs> with Jacobian rank k2. And here are the computational tools are piatic heights on elliptic curves.
which we then rewrite in terms of double Coleman. Double Coleman integrals. Right, so here's another example. So understanding the QI points on the modular curve X naught of 37. <clears throat> and this was a question of Harris Daniels and Alvaro Lozano Robledo. So X naught of 37 looks like this. So this also is a bioelliptic genus two curve. And over QI, so the Jacobian of J naught of 37 has rank two. And together, so the Dogra and Mueller, we showed that the QI points on this curve are the following. So plus or minus two, plus or minus one, some points over QI, and some points at infinity. And here we used quadratic shadow T, but in combination with the Mordell vasive. So not only did we apply the Mordell, apply the quadratic shadow T for uh, the primes 41, 73, and 101, but we sieved and actually, after sieving, we found some extra global points beyond this that didn't, that funny enough, weren't in QI. So I think they were in Q adjoined square root of three. Um, but the local heights kind of interacted in such a way that they were picked up, and the Mordal Vasive kept them for us. So moving on to modular curves, uh, so the split Carton curve of level 13. So um, Bilou and Pahon, they determined their uniformity in the split Carton case. And Bilou, Pahon, and Reveillado, they determined the set of rational points on the split Carton modular curves for all primes not equal to 13 and um, many other curves as well. So what about L equals 13? All right, so uh, this is a genus three curve and a model was found by Baran, the smooth plane quartic. And well, the rank of the neuron severity of the Jacobian is three. Uh, the rank of the Jacobian we can show is three. And in work with Dogra, Mueller, Taupman, and Bonk, we showed that this curve just has seven rational points. And then using the work of Baran, this tells us, uh, so she exhibited an exceptional isomorphism between the split Carton curve of level 13 and the non-split Carton curve of level 13. And so we get for free that this also has seven rational points.
So here's a closely related modular curve, XS413. So this is a genus three curve, and it's a smooth plane cortic. And this was studied by uh, Berinder Banway and John Cremona. Uh, they found that the Jacobian is isogenous to the Jacobian of the split Cartan curve of level 13. And here, the set of known rational points, there weren't that many. So we weren't so sure if we could apply quadratic Chabotie because one of the kind of hidden hypotheses of our work is that we need a collection of rational points, and four is kind of the bare minimum to get things to work. Um, but together with Dogra, Mueller, Chapman, and Bonk, we showed that actually, yes, it is just the four rational points on this curve as well. And I should note that this was of interest uh, one of the reasons was from Mazur's program B. So from David Zerg Brown, we learned that this was the last exceptional S4 curve and also the last remaining modular curve of level of power 13. Okay, so uh, David Zurich Brown has been an excellent source of modular curves that uh, are interesting to study. And so we have a few other curves from Mazur's program B. So these were particularly tricky for us. So two other curves from Mazur's program B. Yeah. Eric Brown. So these are modular curves given as quotients of x of 25. And each have the following properties. Each has the following properties. So just two known rational points. Um, but the rest of the usual quadratic Chabot hypothesis satisfied. And so uh, what we had to do here is we fit the global height pairing using the Jacobian and Coleman Gross piatic heights on generators of J of Q. And so we used both interpretations of piatic heights to leverage information about the height pairing here. And so again, with Dogra, Mueller, Taupman, and Bonk, we showed that these two curves uh, each have the two rational points. So they were called X11 and X15. And here, since we just had the one height function, we also have to use the mordal evasive. So the mordal evasive is a very useful technique. Um, for complementing quadratic Chabotie. All right, so the last set of examples I'd like to talk about is also one of the projects uh, here at the Winter School. So this is um, the last set of examples. So the curves that are given as quotients of X naught of N by Atkin Lehner. So this is a nice curve whose 
non-cuspidal points classify unordered pairs E1, E2 of elliptic curves admitting an anisogeny. And well, what sorts of rational points can you have? So of course you can have cusps, you can have CM points, and you can have what are called exceptional points. And so these are just things that are not cusps or CM points. Okay, so we'll restrict to n prime. And Galbraith did a lot of work uh, in the 90s on these curves. Uh, so he showed that if, so the genus of x naught of n plus is 2, if and only if n is one of the following. So 67, 73, 103, 107, 167, or 191. And also the same sort of classification in genus 3. So that n is 97, 109, 113, Sagawa and Kishiro Hashimoto in 96, we know that X naught of N plus is hyperliptic if and only if genus 2. So all of these genus 3 curves are smooth plane cortics. So we looked at these curves, um, the genus 2 curves and the genus 3 curves. Uh, all of them satisfy the, well, most of the quadratic Chabot hypotheses, as I mentioned. So the Jacobian has real multiplication. Yeah, so the rank of Neron Severi, the least G. And we can show that the rank of the Jacobian is equal to G. We also know that X naught of N plus has good reduction away from N, but does not have potential good reduction at n. However, we can use uh, this work of Alex Betts and Natan Dagra that I uh, mentioned yesterday. So we can show that there's a regular semi-stable model of x naught of n plus over zn, whose special fiber has a unique irreducible component. And so by the work of Betts and Dagra, this implies that the local height at n is zero. So the reason, one of the reasons why we want to make these curves is Galbraith, in the course of his study on these curves, asked, what are the exceptional points on x naught of n plus 
for all such curves of genus. I think it stopped at five. Of course, you could ask this um, for whatever genus is practical. So um, together with a number of people, so Best, uh, Bianchi, Lawrence, Mueller, Triantafalu, and Bonk. Um, we showed that X naught of 67 plus has no exceptional points. And 73 and 103 has one exceptional point up to hyperlyptic convolution. And more recently, uh, together with Dogra, Mueller, Tautman, and Bonk, uh, we showed that building on this earlier work, that the only prime values of n such that x naught of n plus is genus two or three um, with exceptional rational points are 73, 103, and 181. So in particular, there are no exceptional rational points in the case of genus three. And so, so no exceptional points. So, of course, this leads to the question, so what about genus four or even genus five? And uh, that's one of the things that we're hoping to answer here. And hopefully uh, we'll hear more about this tomorrow. I think I'll stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. All right, we have plenty of time for questions. So in this example five, uh, you have these two rational points and you say that these are not um, enough to sort of use these uh, Nekovar local heights, and so you have to use uh, fitting using the Coleman Gross height pairing. Right. Are there examples where you don't have enough rational points and you also can't use this fitting of the Coleman Gross piatic height? Uh, so, with the fitting of uh, the Coleman Gross piatic, so I guess we, um, to use the Nekovar height, we're assuming that we have one rational point on our curve. Um, but for the Coleman Gross height, all we need is some number of points on the Jacobian. And if we know that the rank is such that the quadratic Chabotie hypothesis is satisfied, then typically you know that because we have some number of independent points on the Jacobian as well. And I guess everything's implicitly assuming that we have one rational base point. So for one of the curves up there, you had uh, that its Jacobian was isogenous to the X, uh, the split. Uh, yes. Carton of 13. Yes. And, but you only had four points. Are you able to use the, I mean, you got, it did work out anyway, but would you have been able to use the points on the split carton to help you in any way there? Interesting question. Uh, so the split carton curve has more rational points. Um, yeah, I, that's an interesting question. I, I don't. We, we didn't try. Um, I can't say that I can think of an obvious way to do that. Um, yeah, certainly the Jacobian is more closely related, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. No 
no further questions, uh, let's thank Jen one more time for her whole lecture series. We now have a break. We'll resume at scheduled at 3.40.